Joseph Mengele was born in March in 1911 in Gunsberg, near Ulm, Germany. He was the eldest son of Karl Menhill, a prosperous manufacturer of farming implements. In 1935, he learned physical anthropology from the University of Munich. He also held a doctoral degree in genetic medicine. In January 1937, he became the assistant of Dr. Marvon Verscher at the Institute for Hereditary Biology and Racial Hagen in Frankfurt. Verscher was a leading scientific figure widely known for his research with twins. Menhill joined the Nazi party in 1937. He received his medical degree in 1938. The same year he joined the SS, Menhill was drafted into the army in June 1940 and subsequently volunteered for the medical service of the armed as is there is little and often contradictory documentation about Mengele's activities between this time and early 1943. It is clear however that he first functioned as a medical expert for the race and settlement main office in summer 1940 at the Central Immigration Office Northeast in Posen to De Poznan. He then served as a medical officer with the SS Division Viking with which he saw action on the Eastern Front. Wounded while on campaign, Mendel returned to Germany in January 1943. He began work at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Anthropology, Human Genetics, and Eugenics, directed by his former mentor von Verscher. In April of 1943, he received a promotion to the rank of as his captain. This promotion shortly preceded Mendel's transfer to Auschwitz on May 30, 1943. During his time at Auschwitz, Joseph Mengele was not the only physician there. It is popularly believed that he was the highest ranking physician at the camp. This is not the case. The distinction belongs to his captain Dr. Edward Wirtz. Wirtz's position as garrison physician made him responsible in all medical matters for the entire camp complex. Mengele began his career at Auschwitz in the spring of 1943 as the medical officer responsible for Birkenau's gypsy camp. Several weeks after its liquidation, in November 1943 Mengele undertook a new position as chief camp physician of Auschwitz to Birkenau. He was still under Wirth's jurisdiction. Approximately 30 physicians served at Auschwitz while Mengele was assigned to the camp. As a required part of their rounds, medical staff performed selections of prisoners on the ramp. These selections determined who from among the mass of humanity arriving at Auschwitz would be retained for work and who would perish immediately in the gas chambers. Menhu is known as the Angel of Death, or sometimes as the White Angel, for his coldly cruel demeanor on the ramp. He is associated more closely with this selection duty than any other medical officer at Auschwitz, although by most accounts he performed this task no more often than any of his colleagues. The association is partially explained by his postural notoriety. The pervasive image of Mengele at the ramp in so many survivors' accounts has also to do with the fact that Mengele often appeared off duty in the selection area whenever trainloads of new prisoners arrived at Auschwitz, searching for twins. Mengele became interested in using twins for medical research through his mentor, Verstjer. Verstjer himself was famous for experimenting with identical and fraternal twins in order to trace the genetic origins of various diseases during the 1930s. Twin research was seen as an ideal tool in weighing the factors of human heredity and environment. Many of his mentor had performed a number of legitimate research protocols using twins as test subjects through the 1930. Now, at Auschwitz, with four lessons to maim or kill his subjects, Menhill performed a broad range of agonizing and often level experiments with Jewish and Roma gypsy twins, most of them children. He had a wide variety of other research interests. Among these was a fascination with heteroprimia, a condition in which the erasers of an individual's eyes differ in coloration. Throughout his stay in Auschwitz, Mengel collected the eyes of his murdered victims, in part to furnish research material to Kawe Karen Magnussen, a Kaza Willen Institute researcher of eye pigmentation. He himself also conducted several experiments in an attempt to unlock the secret of artificially changing eye color. He also zealously documented in camp inmates the progression of the disease Noma, a type of gangrene which destroys the mucous membrane of the mouth and other tissues. Menhill firmly endorsed Nazi racial theory and engaged in a wide spectrum of experiments which aim to illustrate the lack of resistance among Jews or Roma view this term in the glossary to various diseases. 
He also attempted to demonstrate the degeneration of Jewish and Gypsy blood through the documentation of physical oddities and the collection and harvesting of tissue samples and body parts. Many of his test subjects died as a result of the experimentation or murdered in order to facilitate post-mortem examination. Like most scientists at work in the concentration camp environment, Menhill enlisted the aid of trained medical professionals among the prisoner population to perform the more grisly or mundane tax and to carry out autopsies upon his dead victims. Much of our early knowledge of Menhill's activities at Auschwitz comes from Dr. Meckler's Nisley, a prisoner physician who assisted Menkel under duress. Nicely published his experiences, initially in his native Hungarian, in 1946. His work Auschwitz, a doctor's eyewitness account appeared in English in 1960. Joseph Menkel had hoped to use the research he had garnered in Auschwitz in order to produce his habilitation, a second postdoctoral dissertation required for admission to a university faculty as a professor in German-speaking lands. Instead, in January 1945, as the Soviet army advanced through Western Poland, Menhill fled Auschwitz. He spent the next few weeks at the Gross Rosen concentration camp, until its evacuation. He then made his way west to evade capture by Soviet forces. In the immediate pastoral period, Menhill was in his custody. Unaware that Menkel's name already stood on a list of wanted war criminals, as officials quickly released him. From the summer of 1945 until spring 1949, using false papers, Menkel worked as a farmhand near Rosenheim, Bavaria. His prosperous family then aided his emigration to South America. He settled in Argentina. Menhill's crimes had been well documented before the International Military Tribunal and other postural courts. West German authorities issued a warrant for his arrest in 1959 and a request for extradition in 1960. Alarmed by the capture of Adolf Eichmann in Buenos Aires in that same year, Menhill moved to Paraguay and then to Brazil. Menhill spent the last years of his life near Sao Paulo in declining health. Menhill suffered a stroke and drowned while swimming at a vacation resort near Bertiga, Brazil, on February 7, 1979. He was buried in a suburb of Sao Paulo under the fictive name Wolfgang Jarhard. In 1985, German police, working on evidence they had recently confiscated from a Menhill family friend in Gunsberg, located Menhill's grave and exhumed his corpse. Brazilian forensic experts thereafter positively identified the remains as Joseph Menhill. In 1992, the evidence confirmed this conclusion Menhill had eluded his captors for 34 years. Thanks for watching the video. Sign up and leave a like.